All right, uh, this is Mr. Midshipman, and I want to set the record straight. Anytime you see anybody using this stuff, they're using polyester, and this is the ester, hardener. See, that's how much hardener they use for a whole gallon like this of resin. This is true epoxy. It's not polyester epoxy. That's just a misconception of a used car salesman trying to sell you some gimmick. And I'm sorry there, girlfriends, if your hubby, they already wrote me and told me when I made that suit that we need to do this stuff because, you know, our boyfriends have a really big ego. And you're destroying their ego by showing everybody the way it really is. Well, this is how much hardener that you mix with a gallon of real epoxy. This much, not this much, this much. One gallon to one gallon. See, curing agent, part A, resin. Part B, curing agent. This is part B of the polyester crap and it's far inferior. You might say like I'm an astrophysicist of NASA, in other words. And then, if you want to make it like a color gel coat, you buy this stuff here from Fiberglast number 41 pigment, which is white. You can buy red too if you want. Okay, now you might as well watch me mix it. See what I did? I put markers on here with the marker at the equal lengths in case I don't want to make a full pump. These are called the Systems 3 pumps, but also this uh, company Fiberglass has them too. They're like nine bucks and they do it equally perfect. So I was using the Systems 3 epoxy, which is two squirts of this to one squirt of this, and it's not even half as hard as this. The more the ratio is equal, the harder it gets. This is real stuff that they build aircraft component parts out of, like uh, fuselages and all that stuff. This is the real stuff, and this is I say, like a yellow color to it you know like a piss yellow like so it's not for bar tops so I'm going to show you how to mix this stuff I'm going to go down the line here and show you all the products that you need this here is the 130 second see and I've used up three of these already so it's good stuff it fares it actually fares and that's what that looks like see pretty thin see it's almost like the micro balloons, which I'll show you. Now, this here is the 1 16th. See? And also the bottoms fall out. That's why they're upside down. You can open them either way. So you might want to tape them if you're throwing stuff around. This stuff has like a wool-like texture. And it doesn't really fare too good. It's mainly for filling in holes. Now here is the quarter inch chopped glass, which, as you can see, it's pretty well dust free. These two right here are pretty dangerous if there's a wind. Now we're going to get to the micro balloons. And this stuff here, it's really weird when it mixes. It just don't mix. It's, yeah, they call it micro balloons or micro spears, but see, it's like a powder. See it? very micro and then here's the teroxotropic silica and this is uh, adds resin to make a heavy glue stops running on vertical systems so if you're going to use something on top you want to not mix this because then it'll fill right in the hole this stuff is the same way it feels more like flour Yep, like flour. So we're going to mix this for you right now. Set it up on the tripod, and I'm going to show you the proper way to mix all these products so you don't have a mess. Oh, yeah, and by the way, anybody using this stuff, I don't care what kind of used car they're selling, you don't buy it. You know what I mean? Buy yourself the good stuff. Don't be messing around with somebody like that. They're trying to scare you. They don't scare me. Also, I use these uh, soup cans. See? 
And here's what I use for a stick, just a regular stick that I use for uh, a sink drain. There's no water down in it, so it worked pretty good. Nice and sturdy, you know, it won't break. Because uh, this is two-part epoxy. We don't need some kind of fancy blender to mix it because it's so thick. The, you know, the hardener is plenty enough hardener to disperse into the resin. You don't have just like a one drop per ounce or something. You know, that is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, common sense. Come on, to tell you that's not the way to do stuff. Come on, buddy. Get real. Quit trying to sell your gimmick, your ego. All right, I'll show you first. Put the hardener in there first because watch it takes a while for that pump on the hardener to pump whereas the resin comes right back up so if you need two squirts you know you'll be set you can go one of these see and watch and then two of these and by then that pump will rise and then you can go two of these one Watch how fast this one comes up, see? That one will beat it. See? Or, you can see that one's already at the top. Just about, see? So that's mathematically correct right there to show you that I am smarter than the rest and I'm not copying from you at all. First, my epoxy's way better than your stupid polyester crap. Don't buy into that stuff. Then I take my super stick, mix it up, because it's made out of steel, it's got lots of muscle behind it, so it doesn't start losing it. Now, a lot of people start adding that glue in there right about now, which is all wrong. You want to add... I'm looking for the spoon. You want to add this 132nd mil fiberglass in there next. We're certain because this actually thickens it up too and makes it stop running. So what is better? A bunch of fillers or actually milled glass? So I'm putting two heaping spoonfuls of that stuff. And see how it's mixing up already? Look at that. See? It's already gotten And it takes on like a gray color now. And you can just put this right in as it is on the vertical surface, see? So, according to my laws of physics, putting some more of this stuff in here, the milled fiber now, putting some more of that in there, see how that mixes? See? Now, if you want, you can even put some of this 16th milk fiber in with it too. Sure, why not? The law said you can't. What the law is, they need a teacher to tell them everything to do. They can't think of it for themselves. So yeah, you put as much as you feel that you need to want to put in there, just to agitate them, kind of. That's how much I put in there. Huh? Did it work? Well, if they're calling me one of these right here, then it worked. So, uh, you could even stick some of these microspheres in there right now. We're going to show you that this... 30 second here, right here, will fare without no microspheres. So, now we're going to stick some of this in here. Not that we need any, we're just going to stick it in there like everybody else does to confuse you. Watch that stuff mix. You can actually see it doesn't really want to mix. See, look at that. See? It's weird stuff, and it? Nothing sticks to it, really, until it starts to take on its own. See that? Now, we're going to go over here 
to the pigmentation, which we already broke and stirred. And we get like a drip stick like they taught you in science class, you know. But theirs is made out of glass. Put this right over here and go like that. And they say you can add 8%, but I'm pretty sure that's not even close to 8%. See? That stuff in there. See it? Now look at that. It's nice and freaking white. Or any color you want it. Look at that. Now you tell me that stuff's not going to mill. And it's... Milled fiber. I mean you tell me that's not going to fare. And it's milled fibers. Hell yeah. Now. We kind of probably mixed up just as much as we want. Now we're going to make a big mess with it. Stick around. Put this right here and let that drip because it, it hardens again and you can reuse it. Why can't you? You have to get a new stick for everything. Now we're going to wipe it down with this stuff. And because this stuff isn't set up even close, we don't even have to sand it. But you can see if these holes aren't smooth like that, you can see those holes are gray. It seems like right here. Just put it on there like so. What happens is when you pull this putty right back, pulls it right out of the hole. It does. So you have to do it again. But you can see that fare is really good. It's self settled Now right here, we still, we must have put like eight coats on this now, counting this. Once you start, you just go like my neighbor there. I can't do that because he watches too many of these show-offs trying to show up, and they're just like cutting all the chase and not telling you that, yeah, they did take that many times to, to build this up. Let's build up there. They just don't want you to know that, or you won't come to them. They can convince you that I don't know what I'm doing, and they do. Yeah, but and this here, oh yeah, this thing's completely level now, unbelievably level. We don't have any problems after we're done today, except saying, right here's another one that's sticking on. When you do this in the glass too, you're going to get bugs in it, so that's why we knew we weren't going to do much, especially in the sun. That we really love that. Yeah. But I just wanted to show you how well that fares. The microfiber, they lie. See that? Look at that. I really wanted to fare it. That's it. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. So, if we can just take a little bit right up. See, when you do that, it just pulls it out of the back of the hole. It goes in the front of the hole, but it pulls it out of the back. And here's some of the gray before I started treating it with the white pigment, see? That's what it would have looked like normally. But with this white pigment, now when you scratch it, you're just scratching it into white, and it won't show up like a big gouge like it would in a car, and you'd see the undercoat. The undercoat is the same color as the rest of the top coat now. So yeah, that's the way it's done. I mean, you can come up with all sorts of gibberish if you want. But to me, I'm going to do it my way. And I'm pretty sure you ain't going to say a copy from you. 
See, we got it mainly level. It's just more level than it was at the factory. And why did we put all those holes in there? Because. We stuck all them holes in there because we didn't have nothing better to do. No, because it was all pushing down. Right here is probably where this 350 pound American put his foot right there and he compressed it all in. So it had a big gouge all the way through there that I didn't see until I started perfecting it really perfect. So why we're doing this, I believe that this is the last coat. I'm gonna have to do one more coat here. And that's it. Yeah. So now you just clean these off with a cloth and some acetone and you're done. If we wanted I could have broke out another scraper. These are like these are not like they are exactly two dollars and sixty-three cents for a set of three of them at Harbor Freight, so you only want to clean them off so much and then you start losing the edge. So this here is my board sander, and you want to go this way with it, not this way. You want to go this way back and forth, and then it keeps it nice and flat. You should see these guys, they got such an ego. Whatever I got, they got one too. Yeah, they got one of these board sanders where they go like this. <laughs> you know, and you can't tell them. And the girlfriends will come right over and tell me, you, you need to please stop it. My boyfriend's ego, you're ruining it. In other words, you know what they're saying. Here's another couple tricks with the board sander there, boyfriends. <laughs> First of all, the board sanders are, see that? It's ripped there, see that? So I don't want no more trouble from your girlfriends, boyfriends, and telling your mommy and stuff on me anymore. See that? It was ripped. So I just took the blue tape and taped it. See? And I also taped it here because it ripped. See? Then you'll get more service life out of the paper. Also, I found out don't use it in high humidity because it's soft. The paper's so soft it tears easier too than on the day when it's not so... The humidity is not so high. So yeah, by me taping that, I was able to use it and I might be able to sand this whole thing again with the same board. Yep. So you see, uh, that's why I have a whole box of these. So, see it says 36 grit there. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you can't read upside down there. I keep forgetting that. So yeah, that's why I have so many sanding boards there. So, that's why I'm known as JB. If you don't know what that means, that's good too. <laughs> so there you go. Thanks for watching. Sorry you had to learn something. <laughs>